I don't know if keeping Pantheon's correct. I feel like pa uh, oh, hmm. okay. I want to play Watchful Idol. Do I? I think I just want to pass. Well, if I had played Watchful Idol last turn, I would have been able to have a glimpse beyond target. Majorly punished for that one. I guess I'm glimpsing now. Like, I need these cards in hand. I need them to do things. Okay, well, mm. I'm noticing these aren't really things.
Uh, losing? Whoa! What kind of stabilization hand do they have? Good morning and welcome back to Spids YouTube. This time I'm joined by Jansport because I can't do this alone because I haven't played these decks as much, especially Varus Pantheon. So I wanted to steal Jansport's brain to try and uh, learn more stuff about how to play this deck properly because half of this game is just going to be Varus Pantheon and I honestly didn't know what to do half the time. So I've stolen Jansport for this. Do you want to introduce yourself to Spids YouTube? Hi Spids YouTube, I'm Jansport. You've seen me in the comments. Unless they don't read the comments, then they have Unless seen. you don't read the comments, yeah. which honestly is probably for the best. Don't read YouTube comments. They're not helpful. But don't... Whenever I watch a video, I spend half the time scrolling to the comments and keeping the video in the background. Is this not normal? Is that not, like, the main way to use YouTube? That's the main way people use YouTube, but um, it turns out if you never scroll down to the comments, there's a whole video happening <laughs> on the YouTube. Oh, I had no clue. I just thought, like, the first five seconds had video and then it was just, like, pitch black the whole way through. So I'd, you know, stimulate my brain by reading. Um, do you want to watch the games? I do. Okay. Before we watch the games, I, I don't know why I set you up for that. Um, do you want to talk about, like, the decks that we brought? Because we, I only scrimmed with you for a couple of hours because I didn't have that much time this week to prepare. Um, and we knew we were going to fight Darkness. So we were pretty likely we were going to fight Darkness as well as either, like, Jin Kennen Elites or... Akshan Lee Sin, and we landed on these three decks. Do you remember, like, why we picked these three decks in particular? Like, I knew Acquiescence was because Ferris Pantheon's insane. But, like, the other decks took us time to get to end up doing. Uh, it was mostly the Darkness matchup that we were scrimming, because yeah. in, in, like, all the configurations of possible decks that you expected Absolution to bring, um, Darkness was present and not something you can afford to ban yeah uh so you wanted all of your matchups to be able to hold their own against darkness and you know hope that the choice of the other decks that were going to be in the lineup whether it was Jin, Akshan, or elites um you'd be able to ban the one that you found the most anathema and mm discover a win with one of your decks into the third. Yeah. And oh, you go, you go. <laughs> one of the things that, um, particularly the builds of darkness that Absolution had been running in the tournament uh, with only two Vengeance and two Piercing Darkness as the six cost removal instead of like three Vengeance, one Mini Morph or two Vengeance, two Mini Morph that you've seen sometimes and with no... Um, with less of the really hard, hard six mana removal, um, various Pantheon's general bigness um, gives it a lot of resilience against the Vials, the Pokies, uh, Darkness before turn eight, when it actually starts threatening Pantheon's enormous stats. Um, so that seemed like a no-brainer if that's something you're trying to beat. And the aggro Gwenalawi, um, I think originally there was a more mid-range version of Gwenalawi that was not able to find the tempo to get in under um, turns where uh, using things like Ixtali Sentinel Soul Cleave or just 
establishing a Senna with a somewhat buffed up darkness where darkness could then like try to control the game because uh, unlike Varus Pantheon, Gwen Alawi really only has Elawi as a threat that is demanding the hard removal because it says overwhelm. Um, everything else is sort of answerable by damage. You know, Gwen only has four toughness. The three three that grants tentacles overwhelm uh, is only a three three. Uh, so that's also very vulnerable. So the tentacle, oftentimes, unless you also have a Lowie, is just like one big unit that demands spiders and catalyzers chump block it. Um, but playing more aggressively with Mirai Wardens and hosts and like the little multi wide board um, seemed to be a better because with only two copies of the box and darkness itself being a high mana investment for return in the early turns of a game like before turn five playing a card to generate a darkness and then playing the darkness is a lot more investment for the return you're getting um compared to darkness later in the game when you've you know reduced its cost or increased its damage etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah, from memory, it was always on the Murray Warden host stuff. The difference was that we took out, like, shakedowns and these sort of, like, mid-range interaction stuff for, like, Blood in the Water. And that was the main way it transitioned into trying to be, like, aggressive Bernie. Because, um, like, it's always been a Murray Warden, six Murray Warden deck. Um, but the Blood in the Water made it able to beat the... Or sometimes beat the turn six into Soul Cleave, healing a million and dealing a bunch of damage hands. Um, was at least the theory. Yeah. Um, something peculiar about darkness is when rally isn't... When you're a unit-based deck and you don't have the ability to rally, um, darkness is allowed to very comfortably play on its turn, um, establishing things like darkness generators or robe makers. Um, that allow it to have better defensive tempo on its defensive turns. And Blood in the Water threatened disrupting those setup turns. Because if you have to worry about defending two turns in a row, the, the ramifications of having to generate and play Darkness over multiple actions uh, is a lot more of a drawback than if you don't have to worry about rallies yeah and then the final deck was elites which we'd spent we did like two or three splashes of this we tried a darius splash and we may have tried one other splash but like absolution had brought ruination every single week and that was like the only way elites was losing basically so there are five non-damasian cards there's two denies and the three forced shens because darius like it, it darius actually didn't really work uh, as greatly as i thought it would uh, maybe it would work in other situations, but not in this one. But that's sort of like, that was, I think at least was the last deck we landed on from memory. We were trying out a few other things before that. Um, yeah. But Elites, elites, elites was late. And even though Elites felt favored with the non-deny splash, um, the, the only games in scrims that I won on darkness against elites involved casting ruination yeah and so i think teching to just try to fully eliminate that lose condition is reasonable it's, and um, it's not like deny is useless against auction we sin like it prevents a lethal turn or it prevents a concussive or something right like it's not it's not yeah. so silver it's not a to bad card useless. no deny is generally a playable card mm. Um, are you ready to actually watch the video games? You haven't seen these, right? Why did I ask you? You already no. know. I already know. Um... <laughs> you already know. <laughs> yeah. Let us start. Okay. Still don't know what to ban. Uh, From memory, he bans, like, instantly. Yeah. Which scared me a little. Oh, I don't know if position. you knew this. He went on quicksand in Akshan Lee Sin. 
So he changed his action list in list to include quicksand specifically for Alawi. When watching his VOD back, he mentioned that he was trying to be really favored into going Alawi, and part of that was using quicksand. Um, oh. That's reasonable. Yeah, I, I don't hate it. Um, I, I want to say it's like a little short-sighted. I can't imagine this deck is good into Gwen Alawi even with the quicksand. You'd have to have a really good Eye of the Dragon plus two concussives or something. Just because you do go so wide and what's Akshan Lee going to do against wide decks? But it was uh, I think it'd be more about getting Akshan Glaive immediately and getting oh, into like right. a pseudo race situation. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, okay, no, that makes more sense to me. Um, yeah. My instinct is that Akshan Lee is probably more beatable than Jin Ken. I'm just gonna like struggle. What's Deathmark for? Oh god, Willie Seedling, I guess. I mean, I just don't have any interaction I need for Jin Kennen. Well, that's what I kind of do for Akshan Lee. So I'm gonna ban Jin Kennen. I don't know if it's the right choice. They banned elites. Okay. From memory, you said you'd agree with this. You said that Jin yes, Kennen was the I... correct ban. Um, they have a lot of cards that just say stun a unit mm. and all of your decks kind of need their units to not be stunned to win the game yeah yeah i think it makes sense I, I it's just like this deck looks scary because it is a real deck and this is like you know it's it's cool but it's not seen competitive play since you know the 60s or something when the power level was a bit lower yeah i think i agree. like were they running steel tempest or is it just the like homecomings and stuff can i quickly go back Yeah, well, we have... They're not on Steel Tempest. They're on... Not on Steel Tempest. But they are on Palms. Cannons. Oh, I guess what they would do is they'd, like, retreat, return a cannon, and then, you know... I can't ever develop, because if they just, like, you know, slow speed retreat, that's another stun. They'll... Yeah. Yeah, if you ever develop, they just God Willow cannon, and yeah. you're terribly upset. And they can time their God Willows, like, pretty well, I assume. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think I agree. So I'm going to ban Jin Kennen. I don't know if it's the right choice. They banned elites. Okay. The um, broad mains are interesting. With... Mm, Pantheon Virus. Pantheon Virus into Darkness? Right? Yeah. All okay. right. So from memory, oh, but they've got Quietus now. So like Dark and Lodestone is less powerful. Right. So they added two Quietus and took out two Vile Feast from the previous iterations of this. And I think that was the only change, um, which was interesting. Um, I think that was also to kill, like, Redeemed Prodigy and stuff, as well as, like, Alawi... Uh, Alawi... Hold on. They nerfed Quietus. Um, I don't get entirely why, then. Is it... Uh, just it could Redeemed just Prodigy? be for Varus. Like... But I hadn't Pantheon done Varus, Varus since week one. So I don't know if they had that read. Could have. Um, is there anything else... That quietus hits. It hits prodigy. It hits. Like it hitting host and stuff doesn't really matter. It does hit the three one fearsome guy, but so does vile face right? So does vile, yeah. Watchful. Oh, it doesn't hit watchful light either. They nerfed quietus. I don't entirely get the choice, especially like in replace of Vile Feast. Like I'd replace like the Soul Cleave with it or something. Um, it, it was just something that surprised me. But obviously it worked here because of the Lodestone and also the Weapon Master Friend and Varus. But yeah, th that was an interesting change. I'll keep for a second because- should I keep Pantheon? Ah, oh, Mulligan, would you keep Pantheon here? I would. Okay, why? Because you have Forsaken Bakai. So you get to... Like, you're choo you're going to be able to choose one of the cards that you're drawing on turn 3 or 4. Um, so the likelihood that you'll stall out on Pantheon triggers by... Like, turn 6 is pretty unlikely uh, sometimes. Like... Especially against fast interactive decks where like pre-committing spells every turn is kind of like feels bad. So I'd probably be playing for a turn 8 Pantheon flip. Right. Um, which means like you have a bit of leeway in making sure you have things to be targeting with over 8 turns. 
mm. to ensure his level up. All right. And you think, like, I should be thinking in my head to try and go for a turn eight flip and try and slow it down a little bit and take passes if they try and gain me out. Yeah. I also just like taking passes. That, yeah, I know. I, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's entirely possible to have a turn six Pantheon flip. It just, it requires a, an above average hand. Yeah. And um, against decks that enjoy passing as much as I think Darkness enjoys passing, um, it would require like pre-committing a lot of targeting rather than using the targeting reactively. Yep. Um, which can work, um, but it's like if you have Pantheon and you level him on six and you don't hit Spell Shield and they have the Vengeance... Like, you've invested a lot of pretty premium resources proactively, like, which is fundamentally less valuable than investing them reactively. Yeah. And so you've sort of lost value and they had the answer and your game plan kind of falls apart. Whereas playing a little bit more reactive and going for turn eight, I think just has... It feels better. It's so funny knowing how the outcome of this game goes and knowing what you're saying I should and shouldn't do. I think this is extremely hilarious, don't you? Do you flip Pantheon on six? I is flip Pantheon on six hilarious? and I get Spell Shield on Vengeance. <laughs> um, yeah. So I do keep the Pantheon and I do get I the I'm turn like, I don't know if keeping Pantheon's correct. I feel like... Pa oh, hmm, okay. I'm going to need things. Pale Cascade is a thing. Should I be playing Pale Cascade next turn? Am I supposed to do Forsaken Pecan into Pale Cascade? So, what would you do here? I would end round and play Bakai Pale Cascade on turn two. Cool. I was very concerned if this was the right play or the wrong play. I wonder if that's right. I wonder if it's Forsaken Pecan into Pale Cascade. It actually might be. I don't know. I've never really played this deck. I don't entirely know what I'm doing with it. Uh, this Lunari Cultist draw, by the way, is, like, insane. And I see why this card is so good in this deck. It gives you two procs for two mana. It's, um, Yes. It's so Lunari good. Lunari Cultist, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. would you take from this? I mean, I think it's rather obvious, but would you skip? Or would I'd you take uh, the yeah. left Wandering Shepherd. Why? Personally. It's on the left. Uh, I'm a bit of a centrist, so I picked the middle one. You're a bit of a centrist. Yeah. I think both sides have equal arguments, you know. <laughs> you know, mass murder and like maybe be friends sometimes. Um, yeah. Wandering Shepherd for sure. I'm pr a left one because that's the order that you read things, left to right. But... Interesting. I think my eyes drift towards the center, so I pick the center one that way. But I guess that makes sense. I don't know, like with, with prediction, don't you work like pictographically? Like I just look at the images and I'm like, you know, this card does this thing. I'm not reading the text or anything. Yeah, but you, I still scan the images from left to right. Interesting. Okay. I, I, I don't... I'm not Do you, like, surprised. start middle, then go to the left, then jump over the middle to the right? That's inefficient. I think in my brain I want to say that I look at all three of them at the same time, but... Impossible. My instinct <laughs> is that it's probably center, and then left, and then right. I probably do do it that way. Every time I've predicted, I think I've done middle, then left, then right. Anyway, we'll move on. The Wandering Shepherd's on three, Cultist on four. Yeah, I can see myself rocking the flow things. Oh, this is interesting. Am I gonna do this trait? No, because I want the I want the unit around. Is this a waste of a pale? Probably. I should probably just pass. But I also do want to proc the Pantheon. I'm unsure. I reckon we could pale Cascade. I think I'm going to. I think it looks weird, but I think it's maybe the right play. It's very, very weird though. When I was watching Absolution watch me play, Absolution thought that I wanted the draw that turn and that's why I did this. Like that I predicted and then drew because I needed my card that turn immediately right now. Which I thought was a humorous You needed analysis. that zero mana card. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. well, I think if game. I if I saw that prediction, I don't think I would have played the Pale Cascade. I think I would have been happy to just play Wandering Shepherd with mana hanging Interesting. out. Interesting. Yeah, I don't hate it. I, th I think that can make sense. It's like I do have, you know, one, two, three, 
I just need to find a four and a five somewhere. Oh, we're already done four. I just need to find a five anywhere in my next two draws. Or three draws to flip Pantheon on six, which is why I thought it might have been fine. And, like, I don't know what Pale Cascade's actually doing against their deck. They're not going to, like, numbers me down this early on if I use the Pale here, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a possibility that they just, they open this turn with Vile Feast. That's fair. Or, or Quietus, yeah. I mean, if they do that, wouldn't I just, like, Lunari self-target and then do this friend on the turn after? They'd have to have Vile Feast plus Quietus for that not to work. They would have to have Vile Feast plus Quietus. And they're only on one Vile Feast. Right? Like, they could Pokey and then Quietus as well, right? That's like yeah. a specific hand read, I guess. Or, not read, because we haven't had that much of the game yet, but, like, a specific hand range they'd have to have. But sure, that does make some but sense, yeah. I think I'd, I'd also... I'd be pretty okay um, if I played Lunari Cultist and they quietest it. Because then they don't have one of, like... 50% of their quietuses are gone, mm. which makes um, your Wandering Shepherd choice and eventual Varus draw a lot more dangerous. Yeah, sure. Either way, it's delaying the game. It's either delaying your Pantheon or delaying your weapons. But either way, like your end game still looks good if they're doing that sort of play with the pre-commit Pale Cascade or the post-commit Pale Cascade. Post-commit isn't a real sen real word. I mean, like, doing pale this turn. But, yeah. No, I think that makes sense. Yeah. I'll do Wandering Shepherd. I'm going to try and set up the, the things. I think I'd rather have Sandswan Amulet. Fearsome, actually, is, like, sort of difficult for them. They've got this guy, but that's... I guess they do have a few Fearsome blockers, but... What's your instinct? I really like Combat Reel. Yeah. I don't think it's bad at all. I think it might be bad because of our hand state, but in most cases, I think I would prefer combat reel. But if we I don't took have... combat reel, would you want me to attack this turn? Uh, if you could attack on your opponent's turn. Okay. In my defense, I'm at open next turn, but sure. Yeah. All right. Plus, like, I get another I, a targeter. Yeah. Yeah. Then, like, they'd block and then might feel obligated to play Vigar to count Darkness or a Robe Maker or something. They might invest some mana, um, which would allow you to get down, like, Saga Seeker and equip it for the target. Mm hmm. And then even predict, because our, our hand state isn't, like, super juicy. I want to use this predict on either turn 4 or turn 5. Yeah. Um, specifically looking for Expanse's protection. I think that's the number one card I'm interested in adding to the hand from yeah. this point. Um, if we're planning on, like, open attacking next turn with... Combat real. Wouldn't it also make sense to do it with Sans One Amulet such that they only have like three other fearsome blockers in the deck? Right? Like Senna and Roadmaker and Oh no, the fucking guy got buffed, didn't he? Never mind. Never mind. I'm... I thought Sans One Amulet could make sense, but they've got more fearsome blockers than not in the end. I'm I'm looking at a uh, combat reel as uh it only it'll only cost one to re equip. Um so <laughs> Like we're we're trading our equipped uh, broccoli and pushing two damage with Wandering Shepherd, and then only spending one mana to get our Pantheon trigger for the turn, mm. um, which you know leaves us open to either like just play Cultist to generate the gems or predict to try to fix our draw. Um, or if they spend mana, we could even like play Saga Seeker and choose to put Combat Reel on him and play Lunari Cultist and mm. start building a, a Saga Seeker that's um, out of current darkness range because they haven't increased darkness's damage yeah. at all yet. It's still at two. And if we can force a harder piece of removal 
on to Saga Seeker, then we'll feel really comfortable playing Pantheon on five uh, just to get him the extra faded trigger before he levels yeah. um, for a big attack. Yeah, I think Combat Real is the better choice, yeah. I think I agree. I mean, Combat Real lets me re-equip, play Cultist and Saga Seeker. So do Saga Seeker and Combat Real. I'll take Sentinel Manual, but I'm unsure. It's very weird, I'm not used to this deck at all. <laughs> <laughs> I presume I'm just misplaying after misplaying. Like, I've barely played this deck yet. Oh! Um... Yeah, I guess I don't attack. I mean, I do want to put it on a Saga Seeker, or even on a Lunary Cultus, right? Yeah, for now, I'll pass. What I'll do is I'll play Lunary Cultus and then Saga Seeker, and I'll jam the Saga Seeker. I thought I had the attack ready too. Oh, I don't have the attack token. Okay, well then, that's also <laughs> more of a reason not to have attacked. I'll play Lunary Cultus. I'm scared about Vigar. Roadmaker. Okay. Uh, I'll play Saga Seeker. I'll jam the Saga Seeker. And then I'll move on. So three. It'll be four and then five. Okay, I'm glad I did the Pantheon that way. I can even do Pantheon Gem this turn if I really want. And I think I will. I think I will Pantheon. We have enough darkness. They're not running group. I presume you've got no issues thus far. Strain equipment? Sure. I'm gonna gem up nope. the Pantheon friend. Ooh, I could do Varus. Like, what are they gonna do? They're gonna play Darkness? I feel like Varus is just always good, right? Thoughts? Do you have anything in particular you'd like to do here? Yeah. Or not like to do here? Our Varus can't level. Mm. I think I actually like opening with uh, Bakai. Okay, why? To, to see what we're going to draw off our Pale Cascade. Interesting. Right, because if it's something like Expanses, then we can feel super comfortable about beating Vengeance and stuff. Yeah. Fair. I was thinking Varus can apply pressure, because they can't block him. Right, because gain strength, kill friends. But I don't hate that. I actually think that, that might be a... Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Alright. And then I open, I do Pale Cascade on Pantheon. The only reason not to is that, like, I don't know if I'm going to be attacking with Saga Seeker. I'm unsure. I'm unsure what the best course of action is in most of these situations. Piercing gets a waste of healing. I think it is Varus. But it's close and I'm unsure. Piercing? Vengeance. Alright, I'm gonna start with Pale on this guy. And hope for a, a spell shield, okay? There's a chance of no spell shield, but... <laughs> And I'm just gonna we'll hope spell shield. <laughs> yeah. We did get spell shield. Oh we're... boy, Pantheon. Oh, that no, it's spell shield. Okay. Uh, wow. Also got elusive yes. and some other friends. I can just like... elusive spell shield lifesteal. Yeah. Uh, this... Like, I got quite lucky. I'm probably do a block that this early on. Yeah. The triple threat. Mm. Now, I'm a little bit scared of, like, Senna Ruin. Right? To beat that, what I could do is look for the strike spell. Yeah, so I think, like, a big issue with what has happened thus far is that I put all my eggs on the field and I just do lose to Ruination. Like, and if I have to do the Forsaken Bakai play and they're forced to interact with Pantheon, then I can do Varus stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, I've got second Pantheon in hand, but, you know, if they do a post-Ruin, Pantheon only does, like, five damage if he's not supported in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, well, luckily it is turn seven, so if they, they do Ruin, you'd be able to play Pantheon and equip him. And then, but then that, that'd be your turn 10 attack token, right? Because they'd ruin on your turn 8 yeah. attack token. Yeah, like they're getting a lot of time if that's the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, it's an amazing draw, I think that is. Oh, yeah. Harazi. They've got 8 mana, so they've got 8 plus 2. That means they can do stuff like Vile Feast or Ruin to beat. You didn't um, even need to predict to draw well. good cards. Yeah. That's... It's weird. I really do want a strike spell. 
Um, I think I will do Unending Wave to look. Yeah, so my thinking was that to beat Ruination, I should just get a strike spell. Like, get the get bad concerted strike? <laughs> just kidding. Um, do you like that play, or do you think it's better to just, like, keep passing endlessly? Uh, I'm probably passing here. Just because I think... I think because Darkness is still at two. So, like, and they... They've, this'll be four darkness damage towards their Vagar level condition. Um, they're not in a position to end the game in a hurry with like possible soul cleave shenanigans, right? Like our Nexus isn't getting targeted multiple times for a while. They have to play a Vagar and, and sit for a couple of turns. Um, so once again, I think I I would have liked predicting, and if there was good things to predict uh just using those so you'd be predicting and... for power as opposed to for the reaction cards like just getting more pantheons and more oh uh, well we already have more pantheon so i'd i'd be predicting uh, still for expanses protection because mm. um, again if we if we do find expanses protection uh next turn we just play harazi with Expanse's protection available. Yeah. And I, I don't know how they beat us attacking with Harazi with Expanse's protection. Well, they available. can afford Vile Feast Ruin, and they can just do both on the stack, and um, only one thing can stay alive after that, because we only have two spell shields at that point. But that's still, like, pretty good for us, and they're still losing center in one of their main interaction points. Yeah. Like, we're... We're keeping a Varus who is close to leveled. Yeah, and we have a, a second pantheon. We'll yeah, see. and we have a second pantheon and weapon master in hand. Hmm. So if they want to spend all of their mana stopping our Harazi, I'm pretty okay with that. Okay. Yeah, I think I think you're quite highly valuing predict more than i was valuing predict because um, for the last few turns you've said instead of this i would have predicted to try and find x tool uh, while i'm just trying to continually play powerful things constantly um, yeah and that's uh, well that's all part of why the deck is good we have a lot of powerful things it's hmm. it's for you know we have pantheon we have varus we have a weapon master um we even have a second pantheon um and I think because we have these things available, uh, the number of cards in the deck that we actively, like, really want to draw is much lower than normal. Because we already have most of the pieces of the Voltron. Interesting. Okay. Sure. And if, like, we could just find that yellow left arm, I think the game is cinched up. Finn. All right. All right. Although if I do an ending wave, they're going to be able to re-darkness me, right? But I think that that's going to happen anyway. If they do another darkness and then I do another pantheon, they can still afford the ruination stuff. So. Oh, I can Forsaken Bekai to look for it. Yeah, all right. I'll pass and Forsaken Bekai to look for it. Re Reconnecting? Thanks, I guess. Because if I find the Furious Builder, I didn't. Although I can Guiding to keep Pantheon around, but it doesn't play around Ruination stuff. And like, I'd rather Pantheon die so that I get, um... I can just play second Pantheon. I'm gonna do this to try and find Furious Builder. Unforgiven Gold. Okay, well I can replay Pantheon, I guess. So I presume you just disagree with every action there, then. I... I didn't hate the Predict. Yeah, but... Um, I... I would I definitely would have predicted. I I don't think I would have been drawing cards this turn. Mm. Um I would have been it's like, okay, you killed Pantheon, here's a new Pantheon. Really? Like see I don't even with your line, wouldn't it be better to just pass and then do Harazi, such that they're forced to ruin it? But that way we're not losing Pantheon when they ruin it? Or would you not be playing Harazi in this world where you're playing second Pantheon? That's a good question. Let me go back to thinking. Oh, good. No, I think past me was was correct. Let Pantheon die just 
play Herazi. Yeah, yeah, I don't hate that. Obviously, if I had gotten a momentous choice, I could have kept Pantheon around, but very little investment. But to try and find the like the oh, but the Vivalis doesn't matter, right? Like none of this matters. It's ruination or bust, right? I don't know. Maybe I fuck this up. So if they have Vile Fuse Ruin, like, what am I gonna do? If I played Lodestone there, maybe I could have Force Ruin and then tried to beat them with second Pantheon or something, and now I'm forced to be Pantheon, Pantheon now? It's tough. This deck is so complicated, man. I don't understand what I'm doing half the time with it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play Horatsi next turn. Which means I guess I just play Zakasika. I think I'm playing Horatsi next turn, and my thinking is that they're forced to kill immediately, or they're forced to Vengeance Ruinate then. I'll force the Vile Feast Ruinate then. I think I'm right in saying that Horatsi's the proper play. I don't know why I played Zagasiga, by the way. Um, please? Thanks. I think. I think this is the right logic. I guess I do replace the Zagasiga. I don't know why I played it then. But I think Horatsi makes sense. If they've got the ping plus the Ruination, then at least I keep my Pantheons. Dawning Shadow. Okay. It's not the worst fate. Because I'm still buffing up this and they're forced to block one. Hold on. Did I darken back? No, because uh, they, they that's not the button. A darken bow or no darken bow? I think no darken bow. Yep, I agree. Unit. They might have a unit they can play. Yeah, because any conchologist catalyzer. There is not to with this. If they got file, it gives them a free block, kind of, sort of. I think this is worth it. So they've got aloof in hand. Um, and I think that might be their only unit in hand at this point. But they obviously wanted to play a unit. And at least this way we kill a center. I could have played this. I don't know, like, if they had a... I guess if they had a unit, they wouldn't have played it. I'm unsure. I'm unsure what the right play was there. My hope that they don't have another center, so I don't have to worry about a ruination anymore. And having, like, unironically, having Harazi is, like, amazing for me. Like, it's on the board. It's doing things. Sorry, I've just thought about this. Am I crazy? Why didn't they just play that at fast speed? The, the center spell? To remove the spell shield from Harazi. Um, is that better than keeping Senna alive? Mm, uh, they would have had to have dealt with Varus getting buffed and spell shield. Oh, Varus. Oh, yeah, I guess I would have supported Varus in that sense. Yeah, no. All right, you're right then. I'll pass. I'll do Shepherd plus Pantheon, I presume. It's very weird. I'm unsure what I'm doing most of the time. And as soon as they don't play center here, I feel like I've won. Like, they can't do anything anymore. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I mean, second Vengeance. I'm um, even uh, still. Like, what's second Vengeance going to do against Tarazzi and Pantheon? Well, I presume this darkness is going to get pointed at Tarazzi. I presume I'm playing Guiding Touch on Tarazzi. Okay. Or actually, I think I might be playing Weapon Master first, but anyway. With this deck. Okay, that does two damage. I can heal out of range of that, that's fine. In fact, if I get a heal, if I get a health one on you, mm. yeah, I can take Shepard's authority. That's okay. Contra, I'll play Pantheon plus Dark and Bow. I like playing Mimosai. Pantheon first. Really? You want to get the Faded Brock? I want the weapon on Pantheon, in case it's Rake. Um, but that loses to Ruinate if I don't get a Spell Shield. So, like, Rake doesn't do anything for me, I don't think. And even if I do get Rake, I can weapon swap. Right? What does it cost extra mana? I'm not doing anything with my mana. And, like, over the next two turns, I'm never going to spend my entire hand. You're making him nervous about having five mana available. To, for what instance? He might be Furious Wielder. He doesn't know. For what? In, why would I ever want a Furious Wielder? Like, even if I did a Furious Wielder, why would I want to threaten it? Soul Cleave on Ixtali, they heal a little bit of health. Yeah. No, I Eight think this is, is the a right lot play. of bit of health. I think this is definitely a <laughs> right Um, because I wanted to get like one more keyword on Pantheon. Like impact is cool. So is spell shield, slightly less cool. But like, I've gotten I, that with guiding touch. I don't know. I, I, I sort of think it doesn't really matter as well. I don't know if they can. Probably no, it doesn't. No. Probably not because it's. They can pop spell shield, but I don't think it matters anymore. 
Like, I'm feeling great. They can't even life steal the deck. They're gonna pop Spell Shield, I presume. Okay. That's also partially why I liked shield. Pantheon first. Not a big deal. Is... I'm gonna put the Darken Bow on this guy. Just to set up multiple avenues for legal. I think Darken Bow should always go on Cultist because of not you one could, yeah, toughness. You could, yeah, you could, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought I thought like they they literally can't afford stuff, and if I need somehow to use this as lethal, I can buff this. But yeah, sure, you're kind of correct, I guess. Like this can only get plus five, so I thought at least two plus five is seven. Oh, okay. But like I I don't think it matters at all. <laughs> yeah. All right. And now it's just one allow you. I don't know if I played Pantheon Varus correctly. This is the thing that I'm gonna need advice on. Um, I have a feeling they might have had a little bit. Of Advice? I guess your advice was like back in Mulligan when you said go for a turn 8 instead of a turn 6. Yeah. I don't know, but when the universe hands you turn 6 Pantheon with Spell Shield, like, just take it. <laughs> for that hand, if they just had Vega, like, it would have been pumping up a lot over time. I had no Furious Wielder. Um, and if they had the Ruination, like, they had opportunities to do stuff there with Vega or Ruination, they just didn't have it, right? Now, I was hoping I was playing around them properly, but how am I supposed to know these things? I don't really understand this deck very well. Okay, but... And we have this matchup, which is honestly worse for me now that they've... Oh, but they don't have a Vile Feast, right? It's close. It depends what they've got. Um, I need early units. Please give me early units. Do you agree with this mulligan? Yes. Okay. I might have kept the Glimpse. Whoa. I really I, like I don't think I've ever kept the Glimpse kind of in my life with any deck ever. Uh, you get to say, no, you're not leveling Vagar, I'm drawing Gar. Interesting. I don't... Huh. I still don't think it's worth it. I think I'd rather have a one drop. But interesting. Okay. These are sort of early units. They're not. These are actually. I really want an actual early unit. Ah. Uh, hmm, hmm. These died quietus. All of these things died quietus. It's a little bit concerning. Mark. Okay. My things no longer died quietus. So I'm gonna start with Phantom Butler because they don't want to. They don't want to fight a Phantom Butler. Then I'm gonna play Redeem Prodigy. And if they quietus Redeem Prodigy, I'm gonna be really happy. Um, am I supposed to do this one? No, because they got another two drop. Okay. Do you have any thoughts about turns. these first few turns? Or no? Phantom Butler makes sense. Not blocking makes sense. Okay. Gonna Rupture? play Prodigy. Yeah, they are gonna quiet us. Okay. Well, then I'm gonna play Redeem Prodigy. Oh. That's I guess, like, low. if they were gonna instantly quiet us Redeem Prodigy, then it would have been better to have blocked so that they feel like they need to quiet us now that Redeem Prodigy doesn't have this thing happen. So, should I have blocked there to play around in quotes quiet us? Because Quietus is slow speed, they can't develop a unit. I don't... I don't think so. I'm not sure I like that Quietus. Yeah, especially since, like, they took out Vile Feast for that card. I'm not sure if they had Vile Feast there. Yeah. I, 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 like, I don't think... Like, taking three damage from... Of, you know, one fearsome attack is... Is so threatening that... I'm gonna start expending valuable resources on it immediately. Hmm. I think I'm like just well chilling. Yeah. That's Vile Feast over here, very clearly. I think I'm gonna end up playing Alawi. Oh no, I'm gonna be playing Opulent Foyer. Creatures of Boo! Here's Opulent Foyer. And now Alawi will get huge, which is my hope. A huge Alawi is everyone's dream, I think. Vile. Okay, so I've got the option of Mark of the Eileen. Would you Mark here? I presume no, but I honestly don't know what to do with Mark. Every single time I have it in hand, I never know what to do with it. If we Mark, Catalyzer only gets one hit. If we don't Mark, it gets two hits, which puts Darkness at four, which means it'll go to five after one turn with Vagar. Yeah, I think we don't, because if they have... Vigar, the extra catalyzer hit, um, all it does is it, like, the one turn acceleration is a 5-6 darkness, uh, which doesn't level Vagar. Um, because I think how they have to try to win the game is, uh, killing you. Interesting. With darkness on Nexus. I disagree. Uh, with that answer. I think the way they beat me is preventing me from having units. <laughs> like, they could win with, like, three strength beatdown for all I care. Um, yeah. 
But against Foyer, you can only prevent so many units. I guess so, but... I don't know, it's going to take a few turns for that to actually come to any sort of realization. Funnily enough, I can also tentacle smash the, the friend. Do I care about their darkness being larger? Do I care about it going from three to four? A little? Not a lot, but a little? Hmm. Really wish I had Glimpse Beyond there. Wow, well, if only I had Glimpse Beyond there. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna be playing a Lowie next time. Would you have tentacle slammed either of these units? I don't think so. Okay, and I'm gonna be attacking with a Lowie as a primary. I'm a little bit concerned about if they have Darkness or Vengeance. But for now, like Vengeance would suck. Yeah, vengeance means I might just lose on the spot. Yep, yeah, okay. Would you have done anything differently? Play a Lowie and get it vengeance. Yeah, would you have done anything differently no, than I... playing a Lowie and getting vengeance? I think that's the optimal play. Okay. Um, I can kill the 1 1 if I really want. I might do that. I think it might be necessary at this point. Kill I think I should have Tentacle Smashed the previous turn. I think there's very little reason not to have done that last turn. Doing it this turn, we have Mark if they try to kill the Tentacle with a small poke. Uh, okay. like, a, like a pokey. But I was... I was thinking about that more for having a better attack with a Lowie. Yeah, um, now that Alawi has been vengeanced, in hindsight, we would have taken less damage if we smashed last turn. Mm. Well, that means they wouldn't have attacked, because they wouldn't have bothered with attacking with this friend, I don't think. They would have used this guy yeah. defensively. 1-1, one, one, attack with the ghastly band. Unless they had the Great. pokey stick in hand. Right, they would have they yeah. poke the tentacle and then attack. Yeah, it's not great, but I think it's possibly my best player. Like attack, I will say, not having the wonder really made this game so much different, and no Mariah Warden either. Got a ghastly band, deal five damage. Unless I've got another vial. Okay. Um, I could mark to attack slightly better. Yeah. I'm expecting you to say no. I just want to ask if Mark... It's a theme that I was planning on this episode to continue asking if I should play Mark or not. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I don't like it that much. Okay. Mark. Mark wishes four more damage. The only other thing to spend mana on is like Redeem Prodigy plus Blood in the Water, right? Depends. Like, if they play Ixtali, I'm just sort of starting to lose everything, right? I don't know when the proper mark times is. It's possibly in situations like that. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the proper mark time. Yeah, okay. Ixtali time? Sort of what I'm expecting right now, is Ixtali. Okay. I'm gonna play Redeemed Prodigy. Senna. Um... Yeah, alright. I mean, I'll play Phantom Butler. Another Quietus. Yep, alright. Well, that's sort of half game, right? You disagree with anything during that turn? No, that all right. tracks. I think we're tentacle smashing. I don't know what I'm gonna do against the hand like that. The Quietus is really good against me, and I could have played around that slightly differently. I can kill the Catalyzer and, like, attempt to have things happen. But then the right, darkness way, attackers, just gets they, bigger. So, yeah, like, at this point, they've got Senna and this at fast speed, and my deck maxes out at Gwen. Like, there's no harrowing, there's no anything. So, like, I feel like I, I sort of lost as soon as I they had those two quietuses. Right? Um, it's just like we couldn't two. go under, and this deck was trying to go under, and we failed to go under on turn two. Yeah. What did attack for something? But the thing is, they just have darkness. Like, it doesn't matter what I do, right? I need to be looking for, like, something. I don't know. I don't know what that something would be, but I need it. 
Oh, well, there's blood in the water. Okay. Yeah. It's unfortunate. I don't know what I would have been able to do. I can't think of situations where I'm happy. That's the kind of a sad statement. Okay. <laughs> Oh, wait. Okay, so they're going to discard my other blood in the water. Yeah, okay. What we can do is we can blood in the water you, and then, like, tentacle smash you, and then deal, like, some damage. It's not great, but it's, on, it's also, like, the best play I've got, right? And I can't really wait for I think it's, it's probably wrong. It probably doesn't let me get to a win condition if I do this. I presume my win condition is draw, allowy, and another Alawi and pass and then they only have one darkness or something mm. that probably is my only real win condition but next time, I, I do this darkness in that logic to try and do something with my hand i probably should have used mark of the isles but if i'm imagining a winning state i think my winning state is them only having one darkness and me having two grants uh, interesting they want this innovative that Ooh. surprised me i didn't expect that trade a lot of damage to be taking. Yeah. But isn't Senna worth it? Like, you get to attack, you get a darkness? Depends on hand. They have some other way to generate darkness. They've got Rick in hand. hand. <laughs> yeah, then... I don't know if I want to play Watch for Lytle. Do I? Oh, what the fuck? Oops. I made a mistake. Very, very pink. Yeah, we're Senna was dead. <coughs> Senna was dead and we have killed her. Right, and I wanted to talk to you about this play, where I decide not to play Watchful Idol. Do you think I should play Watchful Idol here? Yes or no? Wait, has it been sped up? It's not being sped up. Dead. Let me speed this up. My attention span is minimal. Minimal. Hmm. Yikes. I don't know if I want to... Would you play Watchful Idol? It doesn't change anything, right? It does change something. There's one card that this changes. Third tentacle smash? Um, okay, there are two Glimpse. cards this changes. Glimpse. Yeah. Play Watchful Idol. Do I? I think I just Guess what I freaking freaking I want to play Watchful Idol next time. Freaking draw. Glimpse. Mmm. Mmm. Rekindle. Okay. Well, if I had played Watchful Idol last turn, I would have been able to have a glimpse beyond target. Majorly punished for that one. I guess I'm glimpsing now. Like, I need these cards in hand. I need them to do things. Okay, well, mm. I'm noticing these aren't really things. Awkward. Extremely awkward. If they play Dagon, I'm a like, It's been game for a while, but that's game. does nothing. Right. I yeah, it's glimpse. been game for that's like probably five my best turns. Chance of winning is just, yeah, but they've got darkness. Like, what am I going to do? No, not five. That's game, I think. But Six. I think since the vengeance. Mm. On Alawi. Yeah, I mean, they've got the darkness, right? Their hand was double box, two more centers, etc. Oh. Let's move on. The quiet yeah, by the way, inclusion. you can see the game length of the final game. I think a minute of this is also the, the end screen. I and can't see the length, what, no, actually. Ah, oh, can you not see the overlay? I can't see the overlay. Oh, interesting. Okay, the game length is less than four minutes. Okay. No one drops and, and three two drops, which doesn't work with how the curve needs to go with this deck. That's probably. I, I needed to play Mark earlier. I, I, I never, I never understand Mark. Mark is one of the few cards. I want oh, to get. is that that's the game you showed me the the screenshot of the Mulligan from Absolution's POV, right? Yeah, that's the, the game where I yeah. yeah that's multiple Vestian disciples. Yeah. Um, I just want to quickly get your thoughts on Mark of the Isles. Was there ever a good Mark of the Isles turn? Because this card started as a brick this entire game, in my mind. But I don't know if I should have just realize that Mark of the Isles isn't as valuable as my brain thinks it might be. Like, could I, could this game have been different if I Mark of the Isle at a good time? Possibly. My instinct is no, but like, because 14 is a lot of health, but there were like three or four instances where I could have Mark of the Isle and didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I'll never understand I think some thing. of the issue yeah. was a lot of the things that you got marked, got marked on opponent turn. Yeah. Mark doesn't feel as good there. I agree. Or it's like playing Redeemed Prodigy and they try to quietus and you have the attack token. Then Mark 
Yeah. Feels pretty great. My counterpoint to this, or, or my, my next point to the from that would be, could I have played cards that they wanted to quiet us on my attack token such that Mark pogs out, right? That was my thinking earlier with, well, do I block with Phantom Butler or not? That way I can play Redeem Prodigy on my attack token and feel as if it's much better if I mark the Isles there. Or do you think yeah. that wouldn't have changed anything, probably? Um, so you ha you drew Foyer and decided to play Foyer on four, mm. but in your hand you had Illawi and Prodigy? Yeah. And Mark. Um, you could have just played Illawi on four, mm. and then on five played Foyer and Prodigy. Even if they vengeance, and... I don't think I win in those positions, they do it. So, so they vengeance the Alawi, but like you still get a really good attack. And if like they tried to value block with Senna, Mark gets her there. I think they would just take it. They block whatever I hollow up. They take six damage or whatever, and then they're fine. But that's six damage, and you have a prodigy. That it's they six have damage, to... but I've also lost the prodigy in hand that made the future turns look more threatening. But it only made them look more threatening. It didn't make them more threatening in practice. Yeah, but my point is that like I'm doing six damage and my hand is empty, so I can't. I, I haven't. That's also not winning me the game. It might be slightly well, better, but your hand has blood in the water in it. Um. Okay, but I play that next turn, and they've already got darkness from center. But they have to spend that on prodigy. Which is okay, because my hand doesn't have anything else in it. Look, I think you're right. I I'm just trying to, like, say the first argument that comes to my You're just head. trying to be <laughs> right anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of sent that GG in my constituency talking. Because... Uh, even, even in a losing position, I think it would have probably been more valuable to... Uh, since they... They decided to play Senna. Mm -hmm. um, no, they hadn't played Senna yet. What was their turn four play? Oh, was that? Catalyzer. No, it was like Vile no. on my stuff or something. That's right, they hadn't had Senna at that point. Yeah. But... Um, by like having Illawi already in play at the start of turn five, and five mana being enough for Foyer and Prodigy, mm. it makes them did like the choice of vengeancing the Alawi a lot more costly because that's like their whole turn so i think i agree i think if i wanted to give a counter argument anyway i would say that doing the quietus on my attack token thing like making the other uh, mark of the hours on my attack token thing and doing that much wider attack on six is good if I'm saying that they've guaranteedly got vengeance, but with them having like 17 health, I thought that maybe I just need Hollow plus Alawi to try and win, and that they can't have vengeance. And that might be my only win condition, them not having vengeance. Um, I know I asked you a question, and now I've said, ignore the question and your answer was stupid. Um, <laughs> I think, like, to the answer to my question of should I have played around Quietus more by doing Mark of the Isle stuff on my own attack token, I think you answered that well and thankful for the answer. Um, but I think the question was bad in this game state because I needed, I think, to just assume they didn't have vengeance. Because am I ever winning that game if they have vengeance? Because I think the answer is no. I'm thinking the answer is no. Yeah. And so if they don't have vengeance, then I'd rather have that extra hollow on the Lowey, I think. Do mm -hmm. I? Or maybe that's not even true. It might be true. I don't know. We'll move on. That game wasn't that interesting, I don't think. Yeah, now we got Akshan Lee, which isn't, this matchup isn't great, right? Um... It's just, it's just something. It, I don't know. It's unfortunate. If I lose her, I might just be out of that thing. Right, so at this point, I thought if I lose this game, I'm pretty much out of getting into finals for CDS, I think. Because at that point, I'm 1-3, and, and you need to be like 5-3 and three to comfortably make it into CDS finals. Mm. Got Watchful Idol. I've got you it. can get there 4-4, four and four, but, you know. Like, Tentacle Smash is pretty good for Eye of the Dragon. I don't know if it's worth keeping for Eye of the Dragon, but it's good into Eye of the Dragon. Thoughts? I like keeping Tentacle Smash. Okay. 
Okay, well, I got the tentacle smash. Okay. Okay, I've got a fair few tentacle smashes. <laughs> I'm kind of more blase than I realized about my own roaring and, you know, accessing <sighs> absurd things. This is too many, actually. Um, They're like, oh, should I keep tentacle smash? Got it anyway. This is no big deal. I don't know, like, last game there were definitely things I could have done. I'm sure when I watch it back, I could see how that works. But, oh, I did want to mention quickly in my thumbnail for this video. You don't know this yet, but I've got this really funny joke where I'm putting Watchful Idol as my part of the thumbnail. Because this Watchful Idol is like the strongest Watchful Idol I've ever seen in my life. Instead of having like a champion like Fior or Lowey there, I put Watchful Idol there. I think you might be able to see why. Like this Watchful Idol pogs out. I'm going to do Foyer instead of Pinnacle Smash, possibly. Stay just like I'm gonna attack with both. I don't need the, the tentacle that much. Like, I get more tentacles later. Like, I don't think the tentacle size matters all that much. Okay. Uh, losing? Whoa! What kind of stabilization hand do they have? Um, thoughts? I put, I, on their play, not necessarily on mine. I think mine was fine. I think I did my best play there. Uh, my hand's down. Down to three cards in hand? Hmm. I don't... I feel very uncomfortable on yeah. Absolution's behalf. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't keep the Vestayan Disciple. I just I just don't get it. But we can Am I it. crazy? What, do they have like Vicor and Vagabond and something? Uh, I'm gonna do this. They need to have Wuju style of win. And even still, I've got... Do you like this? I do, I like oh, well. this a lot. Yeah. And if they don't have Wuju style or twin, I'm like plugged. Okay. I'm gonna try and run them out of resources. Maybe this is an absurd ask, but I'm happy with this. So this tentacle, like Watchful Idol, gave me three one ones <laughs> and killed two Vestalian disciples. <laughs> and will still buff a Lowie with a Hollowed. What are they gonna do on four? Am I crazy for liking how this is going for me? No, you're not crazy at all this is um their hand right now from memory should be deep med and leeson they need to have another twin that they play defensively now if they want to block yeah exactly and then i just do like opulent foyer or even like my many tentacle smashes my way too many tentacle smashes okay they didn't proc thing i would be smashing Akshan. yeah i'm gonna do foyer I'm gonna do Mary Warden. No, I just wanted to go wide. What are they gonna do? Like, if I smash Akshan, I sort of lose the second Wuji style. If I just play Mary Warden, I'm five wide all of a sudden. No way, they play second Wuju style, and again, they only have three cards in hand, and I have Hollowed and Alawi. I think we're both trying to say we can win <laughs> in just like different ways. Um. I don't hate it. I think, like, we use a uh, tentacle is fine. Divine player. I'm gonna buff up the tentacle. I don't know, we're really wide now, now, though. Yeah. Like, I just think, like, what the hell are they gonna do? They can only... Unless they have two concussives. They can only kill one of these overwhelm friends. Or one of these big friends, of right? Something. Like, I'm feeling fine. And by the way, they don't have these cards. I can't... I cannot believe they gave up oh, the Snyder Disciple there. Am I crazy? Brother and Aurelian, you need to control. You need to draw your things. Uh, look, uh, having a Laoi and Tentacle Smash, like, I had I had the Laoi thing, right? I had the three units. I had the, the, the guy that kills himself. I got the thing that slams himself, and I got the woman that kills the enemy. But I don't know. That seemed a bit bonkers to me. I have a good game and solution. The I guy that explain. kills himself. The thing that <laughs> kills the enemy. The triumvirate. Holy trinity of tentacles. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, that was everything. Um... I'm glad you joined me, because I think the various Pantheon stuff is stuff that I like. I'm not very good at the various Pantheon deck. Um, and you're also very good at analyzing what the hell Darkness should be doing half the time. But yeah, thank, thank you for joining me. Is there anything you want to say? You don't have to say anything. You could say no. Hi, Mom. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Bye. Oh, yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for good being luck. Um, Do you want to maybe leak any possible trade strategies you have going to the next CDS week? Um, Are there any got... champions you're looking to obtain? 
I got interviewed by Pink Ghost. He's doing this interview thing. Oh god, should I say this? If I upload this before that interview, then it's like spoilers. Um... Well, I'm gonna say like, good morning, and you're gonna be, and I'm gonna say, welcome back to Speed's YouTube, and it's gonna be weird because concurrently, it is not Speed's YouTube, it is you and I talking in a voice call, right? But when it's on the YouTube, it'll it'll feel less like it's weird. I, um, actually, I worked at a radio station when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, saying things and being recorded and the things that I'm saying having nothing to do with present situation is not that abnormal. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> the experience of working in a radio station, so... <clears throat> I cannot relate. Yeah, why don't you just get, like, uh, several more decades of life experience already? <laughs> I think you could. Can't I just fast just forward a... life to get to the good bits where I already know everything? Just accrue this? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> why have you decided to spend so little time alive on the planet, Spit? Mm. I should have asked to be born earlier. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely checked the wrong but like what decade do I want to be born mm. in? You got that box wrong when you were yeah. filling out the form. <laughs>